You're watching Don Hudson, Kim Fisher, and Dan Pope. Good for Utah. The U.S. tops the world in medical research, but a study released in the Journal of the American Medical Association argues our nation's lead is slipping away to Asia and Europe. Now, in the third part of our series, Turning the Heat on Cancer, Good for Utah's Nadia Crow shows us the work being done abroad and why the U.S. is now lagging behind on hypothermia therapy. Take a look at seven-year-old Anna Vaprova with her aunt, Ola Snyder. She was always very cheerful and had a lot of zest for life, very energetic little girl. In fact, she was nicknamed a steadfast little tin soldier. We spoke to Ola via Skype while Anna is in Russia with the rest of her family. Family who heard devastating news about an 18-month-old Anna back in 2009. It's a mixed uh, sacral coccygeal teratoma, which is a type of germ cell tumor uh, involving the yolk sac. And that's just something that she was born with that nobody was aware of. Cancer began ravaging Anna's tiny frame, frail, sick, and dying. Searching for answers, Ola finally got a call from a pediatric oncologist. And hear the doctor on the other end telling you personally, get your knees here, I think I can help. It was just, it was just mind-blowing. They traveled to Germany for hyperthermia treatment. We saw a tumor shrinkage that made it possible to resect this tumor completely. Pediatric oncologist Dr. Rudy Wazilowski used hyperthermia on Anna. This uh, combined treatment uh, facilitates a long-term remission in that girl. Not just in Germany, but success in China too, especially with metastatic breast cancer patients. And when she came to us first, he, she has to use wheelchairs. And after treatment, uh, she, she could walk on grass and then on foot. And he, he could, she could carry uh, heavy things by herself. Finally, she could drive anywhere. So the treatment helped her return to the social life. Dr. Jinghua Sun believes after decades of research, hyperthermia is a confirmed successful method of treatment. In the uh, hospital where I worked, we have carried out the hyperthermia since the end of last century. Director of Oncology for the Government of Dominica, Dr. Kamal Malikar, has taken hyperthermia across the globe. There, there, plenty of data, really, you know. The science is there. Science, no question. England, Canada, the U.S., and now Dominica, the poorest nation of all his stops. There's nothing called hypothermia. They have no knowledge about hypothermia. So I want to introduce that. Doctors from across the globe came right here to New Orleans to talk about hyperthermia therapy, something that isn't even greatly used in the U.S. The uh, well-done studies, both in the U.S., Canada, and uh, Europe, uh, show convincing evidence that this works and it works very well. Texas oncology partner Dr. Barry Wilcox believes in hyperthermia. Many of his American colleagues, not so much. In my practice in Texas, uh, it's paid for by most private insurance, it's paid for by Medicare, um, in selective instances for Medicaid. Um, so I think it's access is the bigger problem, people willing to do it and people doing it. Without it, Ola says her niece Anna wouldn't be here. I would love to see it more widely used because I know there are instances out there in, in this wide world, even though as rare as it is, I know there are children out there that are probably dying, uh, dying from this um, after they had already exhausted all the other options. Again, that's Nadia Crow reporting. Now, seven-year-old Anna is 100% cancer-free. Her family credits hypothermia therapy for giving her her life back. Tomorrow in the final story in this four-part special report, Nadia asks why we're not seeing hypothermia along the Wasatch Front. The answer is tomorrow at 10. 300